This is the BBC. Please accept our apologies. Good, good. Fine, fine, fine. <coughs> we present the extraordinary talking type wireless goon show. What a divine melody. Greenslade, take up the story, lad. Certainement. The story so far. An old-fashioned gramophone record was played, after which a short, fat man remarked, What a divine melody. Now, read on. Thank you, Mr. Greenslade. Go and rehearse the nine o'clock news and learn that wall by heart. Ho, 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 lads. Ho, ho, ho. And listen while we tell you a tale. Music, lads. Ho, ho, ho. See you then, much, boy. When I die, take all the treasures of my kingdom, place them at my feet, then bury me in some high, forgotten mountain. Those words were spoken by the Tartar Emperor Genghis Khan as he lay on his deathbed. Point, point, point. <laughs> yes. To this day, the tomb of Genghis Khan, with its untold treasures, remains undiscovered. He lies buried in some Mongol hillside where no human eye has ever set foot. It was 1927, which lasted exactly one year. Late one night, within the Oriental exhibits room, young Neddy Seagun, young... <laughs> Pardon me, listeners. I'll see you in a yard at playtime, Wall. I'll clout that big fat nut of yours. Fine, fine. <clears throat> Neddy Seagun, a young archaeologist, was at work inside the Victoria and Albert Museum. Yes, I always work late at the Victoria and Albert. You see, for years I'd been searching for the lost tomb of Genghis Khan. I was unwrapping some ancient Mongolian inscribed tablets that I had reason to believe would give me the exact location of the tomb of Genghis Khan when suddenly... Who's there? Anybody else? How do you spell it? I've never heard of either of you. Good evening. Bonsoir. Make up your minds. <laughs> Pardon the intrusion, little nit. <laughs> what is this place? Victorian Albert. Oh, really? And which one are you? I'm neither. Oh, well, I'm pleased to meet you. This is my partner, Count Fred Moriarty, the world's last ladder champion of 1927. What do you both want at this time of night? Shut your big pudding muncher. <laughs> Silence. This pistol is almost ready to explode. You crazy continental love sledder champion of 1927. What do you want? Draw the curtain, Moriarty. Now then, is there anyone else in the building apart from you? Yes, two others. What are they doing? Holding me up with a pistol. <laughs> a likely story. Silence. What do you want? Neddy, we want to examine a parcel of rare Mongolian clay tablets that arrived by air today. You're wasting your time. I won't tell you where that parcel is. Oh? I'll give you something to make you talk. Take that! A pound note! <laughs> I'm English. Money won't make me talk. I'll just point. <laughs> there. Mercy. <laughs> right. Turn around. I'm not strong enough. <laughs> Very well. We'll walk around you. Dear listener, even though I had my back turned to them, I could still see them in a 16-foot mirror which I rushed out and bought. <laughs> I observed them open the rare parcel, take out the clay tablet, then placing it in separate pockets, make to leave. Close your eyes, Neddy. Right. <laughs> Dear listeners, the thud you heard was me striking Seagun on the head with the heavy side of a mummified Egyptian piano. Struck, struck down, oh, oh, oh. struck down in my prime, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. struck down, oh. Dear listeners, the groans you hear are those of Ned Seagoon falling unconscious to the ground and hamming it for all his worth, I might say. Lies, 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 all oh, lies. 
Please, dear listener, I'm not hamming. It's just that I like to give Seagoon fans good value for money. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Apart from that, it's good publicity. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> They've gone. I must phone the police. P O L I S. Oh. oh, my head. Hello. Hello, police. I want to report a lump. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> what do you mean? Fine, fine, fine. Constable, there's been a robbery. A robbery? And it in stolen? You see that parcel on the table? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> well, they're right from that. We're on our way round. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry we're late, but I was asleep in bed for chat. I always sleep in bed. So... I'm in condition tonight. Son, they all sharp in your notebook. Now, uh, now, sir, tell me all. Two men committed a robbery. Two men, eh? Male or female? I don't know. They were dressed. What a cunning disguise. Continue. Ah, uh, sure. Thank you. Any money stolen? Yes, a pound note. Why did you steal it? I didn't. They took it off me. Ugh. This pound note. Uh, just a moment. May I lay on the couch? Thank you. I... Now, um, describe that pound note. Well, it was valued to the pound. Tell me more, wonderful money. <laughs> Tell me more. Uh, this pound note, what colour was it? Green. It's mine! <laughs> mine was green. Inspector, it's not the pound that was important. Nonsense. Any American will give you six shillings for one. <laughs> like the Bank of England will give you seven. I am concerned with a very rare missing Mongolian tablet. Uh, you see, that's what they stole. Describe these felons. You'll easily find them. They're carrying a Mongolian clay tablet in their pockets. Splendid. With that description, they won't get far. Neither will we. Shut up, Echo. Shut up, Echo. <laughs> Don't you worry, Zegan. We shall get them. Remember, we police are always on our toes, and everyone else is, for that matter. <laughs> but wait! Who is this approaching in a five-piece cardboard bikini and wearing male falsies? Yes! It's Max English gentleman Gildrung.
The Tomb of Genghis Khan, Part 2, in which Neddy Seagoon awaits news of an arrest. Yes, five days passed. Six, seven, eight, nine, a week. <laughs> but no news. By now, the criminals had almost given up hope of being caught. Then, one night, unable to sleep, I walked through the fog-bound streets of Hyde Park. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you standing in that tree. Here. Yeah. You looking for them two crooks, ain't you, mate? Yes. Why, mate? Oh, I know where they is, mate. Needle, noddle, no. They're in Singapore, mate. How do you know, mate? They left their address for me to send on this parcel of laundry to them, mate. Ah. Oh. I have an idea, mate. Uh, come with me. I think I can... While Seagoon is executing his idea, mates, we go over to Mr. Pipe and Count Moriarty in Singapore, mate. Shut that window, mate. There, mate. Thank you. As I was saying, Moriarty, this clay tablet gives the exact location of the Empress tomb. But as a precaution, I have had the entire inscription tattooed on the back of my false teeth. <laughs> just in case the tablet gets lost. The way, the man who did the tattooing was Dr. Fred Fu Manchu, Chinese tattooing artist. Thank you for telling the listeners the entire plot. <laughs> Talking of Dr. Fred Manchu, the oriental tattooist, reminds me, as I was coming to the theater tonight, this parcel of a laundry just arrived from England. Splendid, Moriarty. Well, I'm going to take a bath. You English! You're so brave. Yes. <laughs> now, take this gun. Yes. And if the phone rings... Yes. Don't hesitate to answer it. Sapristi brains! You think of everything! Not everything. Sometimes I don't think of aardvarks. You mustn't be so careless. After all, aardvarks never killed anybody. I don't wish to know that. <laughs> Neither to the audience. Now, open that parcel. Set him all. Or if you're French, set him all. Merci. April in Paris. We found a Charlie. Save the brown paper for dinner. Set him off. Sapristi! What's this inside? Hands up, Count Mariati, world's last ladder champion, 1927. Sapristi! <laughs> Count, this is my friend Eccles. Hello? Eccles? This is Count Mariati. Your humble servant. Height! Now, hands up again. Where's that rare tablet? Neddy, lower that finger. <laughs> In the 40-foot mirror, I rushed out and bought. I could see behind me Grit Pipe Thin standing up in the bath. <laughs> Don't move, Grit Pipe. Drop that towel. Right. There. Ooh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now you know why this show can never go on television. We will continue with this delicate scene if the ladies in the studio audience will kindly put their hands over their ears. Thank you. All right, Eccles. Keep these two covered with this flint pistol. I'm going to look for that tablet. Point, point, point. I shan't be long. So you're the famous actor. Don't move or I'll blow my brains out. <laughs> I'm sorry. What a lovely voice you have. <laughs> Hey? I say, what a lovely voice you have. You think so? Yes, I do. Quite beautiful. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 